greetings, dear friends. Welcome to another episode of In His Name. I'm sitting here with In His Name's Crusade Director, Evangelist Samuel Murumbe, and we are ready to jump into another fantastic passage of Scripture that we know is going to be a mighty inspiration to you. Samuel, yes. wonderful to be with you as usual. Thank you, Tammy. Today we are discussing a very powerful portion of Scripture. Not That's that right. any portions of Scripture are not powerful, um, but this one speaks to me so particularly because it is about a woman. And you know, as a woman, I relate to other women. That's right. So I, I love this. Uh, we are going to read from John chapter 4, Amen. the story of the Samaritan woman yes. having an encounter with Jesus. That's right. And, and you know, us evangelists love preaching about the Samaritan woman. That's right. And how Jesus speaks to her. Uh, so let's, let's start reading. Uh, I'll read from verse 4. Uh, but Jesus needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. And Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. You know, th this woman, she was not behaving like a normal woman. Not at all. You, you are married to a, a beautiful woman That's yourself, right. and, and you know that uh, us women, we like to talk. Yes. You know, we are talkers by nature. That's right. uh, I think that's why we make the best evangelists, because we like talking. That's we like right, talking. That's yes. what we do quite naturally. Yes. And this woman was not behaving like a normal woman, because she was visiting that well at a time of the day when she knew other women would not be visiting it. That's right. Yes. Uh, the Bible says the sixth hour. Uh, and we know that the six hour, that is not speaking about six o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the evening. It is speaking about 12 o'clock midday. That's you right. know, they, they, they counted their clocks at that time from, from sunrise. So six hours from sunrise, you are looking at midday when the sun is at its hottest. That's right. Yes. So this woman was going when it was the hottest part of the day, yes. a time when most women wouldn't go. Those water pots were heavy to carry. She was pulling back from from interaction. Yes. She was pulling back from conversation. So we have to ask ourselves why? Why was she pulling back um, from ordinary chit chat? Yes. What was going on in this woman's heart That's that made it. her want to avoid interaction? And I will, I will tell you what I think. You already know what I think That's because right. I like preaching on this. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, dear viewer, we read this woman had five husbands. I don't know if any of you have had five husbands. I hope not. Uh, but, but five husbands. And this means that this woman, five different times, she had either been through divorce or she had lost her husband due to death. Yes. Uh, and Samuel, divorce or the death of a spouse, those are stressful, stressful experiences. Yes. And this woman had been through that kind of stress not just once, not just twice, not three times, not four times, five different times. Right, yes. You know, we both know people who have been through one divorce and emotionally they never recover, yes. who have lost one husband or one wife due to death and they struggle to recover. This woman had been beaten and battered, beaten and battered. 
She was a broken woman. She was pulling back from all interactions. She was broken on the inside. She yes. was antisocial. She was in survival mode. She was no longer thriving. She was just surviving. That's right, yes. And then she meets Jesus. That's right. And all that changes. Because everything when we meet changes. Jesus, yes. everything changes. That's right. Everything changes. You yourself uh, came from a background where there was a lot of brokenness. And you know when you met Jesus, everything, everything changed. Yes. Um, and we have to ask ourselves the question, what did Jesus say to this woman to make everything change? Because if we carry on reading, we read that she was transformed. That's right. She left her water pot, ran into, into the village, yes. and she preached to everybody, come see a man, come see a man. She actually became one of the greatest witnesses of Jesus Christ. She became an evangelist. Yes. She became one of the most powerful evangelist women we can ever find in the Bible. Exactly. You know, and her message was very simple, come and see a man. Come and see a man. Who told me everything about my life. Yeah. And uh, going back to what you, was, you were asking earlier, that, you know, I have an experience of that, mm. you know, of being broken mm. in, in my heart many times. Mm. Uh, because sin actually breaks your heart yeah. into many pieces. Mm. And uh, this woman was a broken woman. Broken woman. You know, when, when a heart is broken, Tammy, mm. you, you, you isolate yourself from mm. other people. You, you don't want, you know, I've seen believers even up to today that, you know, if their lives are not in the right standing with God, yes. they wouldn't even go in fellowship with other yes. fellow believers. And this woman was exactly that picture that, mm. you know, she was, it's like what you always say, that sin pushes us away yes. from the presence of God because the holiness of God and sin cannot come together. Yes. And this woman isolated herself completely yeah. from other women. She was doing things that are not normal. Mm. She went at a time when the sun was very hot. Mm. She went at a time when nobody was at the mm. well. And I believe that, you know, she just didn't want to mingle around with anybody. No, she didn't want people asking her questions. Exactly. She didn't want them commenting on her lifestyle, commenting on, on what she's been through. That's right. Uh, she was pulling away. And, and what I just so, so love about God is God set up this woman to meet a man who could completely transform her. That's right. She wanted to pull away from all, all, all socializing. Yes. She wanted to pull away from all conversations. That's well, right. Well, God set her up with the one man who could have the kind of conversation with her that would completely change her. That's it wouldn't right. be gossip. It wouldn't be chit-chatting. Yes. It would be a life-changing conversation. Yes. And that's, that's the conversation that Jesus had with her. And, and we must look and we must see, what did he say to her that so changed her? That's right, yes. And if we look at verse 10, Jesus said to this woman, if you knew the gift of God, mm. the gift of God, this is such a, a beautiful way of describing salvation. Mm. It is a gift. It is a gift because we, we can just receive it. Yes. And we receive it by asking. Jesus said that. If, if you knew the gift of God, you would have asked me and I would have given it to ask. Jesus was saying, ask. That's right. You receive this gift by asking. And it is the most fantastic gift we can ever receive. Yes. And, and tell me to go, you know, with what you are saying. If you go back to verse number seven, you will realize something there. Jesus, you know, he always has a way of pointing to your problem. You know, actually, yes. he's giving you an answer and he's showing you what you need. Huh. And Jesus goes and he says to her, give me some drink. Yes. Actual Jesus, the, 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 the question there, it was not for Jesus, it was mm. for the woman. Yes. Because a thirsty person, to stir that thirst. you know, he wanted to stir that thirst. Yes. And he could see that this woman was a, a very broken woman. Yes. And a broken woman, her soul is so thirsty for yes. salvation. Yes. She was thirsty for something. And Jesus, in verse number 10, when you, you, where you read right yes. now, it's amazing. And then Jesus says to her, you know, if you knew the gift of God, yes. you would have asked me mm. for living waters. Yes. You know? And I would have given them to you. That's right. You know, there's a guarantee. If you had asked me, yes. I would have given. Yes. And she did ask him. Yes. You know, there in verse 15, so give me this water. She asked him. And he gave it, this woman, something happened on the inside of her yeah. that changed her from an introvert 
to an extrovert, Amen. from a broken woman to a red-hot evangelist woman. Amen. The, the, the gift of salvation permeated her and filled her and changed her from the inside out. I mean, the gift of God, this is such a simple description of salvation, but it is so powerful yeah. because this, this gift, this salvation, it, it really consists of two things. Yes. If we really want to break down salvation simply, it consists of two things. Yes. It's number one, it means Jesus comes and lives inside of us. That's we right. have a relationship with God right now while we are here on earth. That's very right. We don't yes. need to wait for heaven. We get it now, which is yes. so fantastic. Yes. And then, of course, heaven. Yes. It means when we die, we go straight to heaven. And that, and that guarantee gets us so excited Amen. to think that one day we're going to spend eternity in a place where there is no sorrow, where there is no suffering. Mm. We are going to be in the presence of God 24-7. Yes. Yes, and I, I, I can't wait to experience it. <laughs> and then it goes back to the actual, there is a scripture to mm. agree with what you are saying. Yes. When you read uh, first, uh, John chapter 1 mm -hmm. and verses number 12, it says, But as many as received him, yeah. you know, speaking about what? Jesus becoming the very gift that you are speaking Amen. about. Amen. He is the gift of salvation. Yes. And he says, you know, but as many as received him. So a gift mm. needs to be received, Demi. It does. If we do not receive it, you yes. know, it doesn't become a gift. Yes. You know, it only becomes a gift when we when receive, receive it. it. And, and that's a scary thing. You can reject it. That's right. You can say, God, I'm not interested. I don't yes. want the gift. Yes. And here the Bible says, as many as received him, to them he gave the right, Temi. Uh -huh. Not just any, you know, you don't just become a child of God by going mm. to church. No. Viewers, this is very important. Yeah. You've got to know that you don't become a child of God simply because you've joined the church. Yeah. You become a child of God by receiving this yeah. gift Amen. that Evangelist Temrin is speaking about. Amen. Receiving the gift of salvation. Amen. And this woman mm. would have said, no, I don't need the gift. Yes, she But could it's have. amazing that Jesus, you know, say to her that, you know, you, if you knew the gift of God, you would have asked you for it. You would have asked. And, and th there's a guarantee you would have asked and he would have given you yes. living water. Amen. You know, there's a guarantee. The Bible is so full of wonderful guarantees, especially when the Bible speaks about salvation. Yes. God really wants to communicate to us the truth that if we ask him to save us, he will not say no to us. That's right. He will not say, okay, hold on, let's first go through your history. Yes. You know, repent of this and this and this and that. And oh, why did you do that? That was stupid. That's right. He doesn't yes. do that. He says, no. you've asked, I give, you are now my child, you yes. are saved. I come and make a home in you. When you die, you go straight to heaven. Yes. There is so much certainty in this. He would have given you. Um, and, and, and this comparison of salvation to water, quenching the thirst. Yes. You know, this, this thirst, th that is something everybody can relate to. That's it, right. it doesn't matter if, if they are living a life of crime and corruption or if they are living a life that seems good on the surface. Yes. There is a thirst inside In of inside them and an emptiness yes. that they are trying to satisfy. You know, whether they're trying to satisfy it with acceptance in a gang That's or, right. you know, through, through drugs and alcohol, yes. you know, or going from woman to woman or from man to man uh, or trying to get the, the best possible job they can, making the most money, driving yes. the nicest car. I, I personally tried many things, you mm -hmm. know, to try and test and, and quench the test. Yeah. The testy that was in my soul, yeah. I tried everything, you know, I mean, yeah. I tried drugs, I tried alcohol, yeah. I tried, you know, whatever that you can name, yes, you know, yes, yes. Um, you know, just trying to quench, you know, that testy in the inside yes. of me until the day when Jesus came into. So that tells you that, you know, he is the gift of God. Amen. He is the gift of God. Tell me, you can never go wrong if you accept the gift of God. You, you cannot, you, you cannot. Can you know, we want to encourage our viewers. I mean, give Jesus a chance. Give him a chance. Amen. If you give him a chance, he will come and he will do in you what we have been speaking about. And you will not regret it. Amen. It is the one decision you can make that we can guarantee you with 110% surety that you will not regret it. That's right. There are many other decisions that we make in life that could go either way. Yes. This is one decision that one can be absolutely certain about. Yes. And I love how Jesus says, I will now give him this water and it will become in him a fountain of water. 
springing up into everlasting life. There Jesus is speaking about being filled with the Holy Spirit, yes. the, the gift of the Holy Spirit, that he doesn't just want to save us so we can go to heaven when we die That's and right. he can make a home in us, but he wants to fill us with his spirit yes. so we can be a vessel used by him for his glory Amen. in a lost and a broken world. So he doesn't just want to take a broken person and save them and fix them. He wants to take them and use them. It's amazing to me that, that how salvation on its own, mm -hmm. you know, it raises such a, a certain hunger mm -hmm. for the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know, in the inside of you, you feel it's, it's as if there is more of yes. God. You know, uh, I, I like what it, a, a, a evangelist Daniel Colenda always huh. says, you know, how hungry are you for God, yes. you know? And, uh, and I think that is the hunger that is, you know, that is, you know, salvation brings in the yes. inside of you. Yes. When you are saved, when you are born again, God develops a certain mm. hunger inside of you. I remember being in prison, you know, after being born again, I had a, a privilege to read a book of Kenneth Copeland. Okay. You still know the yes, story yes. of Kenneth Copeland. About, I, about the baptism of the Holy, know, Holy the, Spirit and speaking in other tongues. Yes. And I, as I was reading that book, you know, something started to bubble in the inside of me. And he took me to Matthew chapter 7, where the Bible says, you know, ask and you will receive. Yes. Knock and the door will be yes. open. You, you know, and uh, as bad as we are, we know how to give good gifts to our children. Amen. How much more will God yes. give the Holy Spirit to them who ask? I remember, Tammy, I didn't even have a, a pastor from outside <laughs> to teach me that that booklet you know brought such life in the inside of me and i developed such a hunger and i put my faith in the word of god Amen. and i said jesus you are the baptizer of the holy spirit Amen. i want you today mm. i ask you today to baptize me into the holy spirit and he did and with the <laughs> evidence of speaking you know what happened it was actually in the midnight when I prayed. The following day, we were gathering together. I still remember yeah. as if it happened yesterday, mm. Timmy, as we were joining hands together. I know when we talk on the subject of the Holy Spirit, both of us, so we excited. become excited, you know. And when I look at the book that you wrote, you know, partnering mm -hmm. with the spirit of fire yeah. you know it's so amazing you know the truth mm -hmm. that you bring about the holy spirit mm -hmm. and tell me as we were praying you know i was not even i had already forgotten what what i prayed for yesterday <laughs> but the holy spirit had, had not, not forgotten. forgotten and on that day you know while we were just praying suddenly out of the blue tell me i started praying in the in Amen. other tongues as the spirit gave me Amen. utterance i remember the brothers who were holding, joining hands yes. with me in the prison. I remember, you know, some of them went under the power of the oh. Holy Spirit. And one of the brothers who was actually more mature than all of us, you know, he said, this is exactly <laughs> what happened in Acts chapter he 2. He had to explain it. He had to explain it, you know. And, and I, it was so amazing. Amen. It was so beautiful. And I believe, Tammy, that the Samaritan woman did not only receive salvation, the gift of salvation, mm. but she also received the gift yes, of, the of the Holy Spirit. And that is what stirred this woman yeah. to go back and into the village. And witness. You know? And yeah. with such a power, with such a boldness. Yeah. Just imagine, Temi, this woman turned from a little woman that a was mouse. a coward and a mouse. Yes. I like what you say. Into you a always lion. say a mouse <laughs> into a lion. I always give people an example with my own wife. You know, when I met my wife, you know, she was kind of a very shy girl. Oh, I you cannot know. imagine and, Connie shy. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, she was not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit. But I remember, you know, I came with another lady called Helen Hewlett. I spoke yes. to you about her. Yes. You know, she met me when I was still in prison. Yes. She became like a mother to yes. me. And that woman shared, you know, the message of the baptism of the Holy yes. Spirit with her. And I remember how beautifully Connie received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. From that from that day, I saw that little mouse <laughs> turn into a lion. She is you know? a powerhouse. And I'm telling a you, today I've got a, you know, a lion in the house. Yes. You know, when that woman begins to pray, things yes. happen. No, the you demons know? run very even, quickly. Even when I'm away, you know, I know that there is someone who She's is praying, praying with me. For you. Uh, Sam, it, it, it's so beautiful how you described it, you know, that God puts this hunger in you. So he, yes. he, 
He first quenches that thirst for salvation. He Amen. saves you. So he quenches that thirst, but he makes you hunger for more of him all at the same time. Amen. You know, it's almost like a contradiction. That's you know, right. he quenches the thirst, but he makes you hungry. Yes. He makes you hunger for him. And, and that being baptized in the Holy Spirit, you know, that is part and parcel of being a believer. That's if right. you don't have that... If you don't have that, you'll still get to heaven. Yes. But you will not live a very nice life here on earth. That's right. You, you just can't. You just can't. You can't live with the same victory, with the same fire, yes. you know, with the same intimacy with Christ. And, and we want to encourage our viewers, if you're not yet filled with the Holy Spirit, you've heard from Samuel how easy it is. That's right. You know, even in the prison. Yeah, God can fill people with His Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, so right there where we are, we pray for you right now, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, Hallelujah. that our Jesus is going to baptize you with His Spirit, Receive it in the name of that Jesus. you are going to start speaking with other tongues, Hallelujah. and you are going to be like this woman, unstoppable Hallelujah. when it comes to professing the greatness of our God. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I'm getting, I'm getting excited. Praise the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is the gift that we need to be able to go out there and spread the word That's that right. Jesus saves. And, you know, witnessing should be so natural. With this woman, it was so natural. Yes. She met Jesus. She had an encounter with him. And what was the first thing she do? She went and she spoke about him. Sure. You know, and, and, and so often what happens is when somebody first gets saved, you know, they're excited and they're telling everything about Jesus, everybody about Jesus, but the devil is clever. He comes in, you know, he brings up this challenge, that challenge. That's what they become is. discouraged and eventually they just end up living for themselves, focused on their own issues in this little bubble and they forget that there is a world dying That's right. and we, we carry the message and we have to share it. We, we have we to share to, it. We just need to be like this woman, Temi. Simple. I mean, she's a simple, you know. Uh, she's not a theologian. She's not a theologian. You know, she just went and told the people yeah. what had happened to her. Exactly. You know, Temi, uh, I cannot hold back on my testimony. Yeah. You know, all the viewers listening to me right mm. now. I mean, you can argue many things, mm. but you cannot argue my testimony. No. Because I have a, a personal Exact you know, experience, encounter, encounter and experience with yeah. Jesus Christ. And this woman, the experience she had with Jesus, mm. that, that I don't know whether it was 30 minutes mm. or whether it was 15 minutes, but tell me that woman turned into a witness that came so Transform. powerful in the power of the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. And, and, you know, Sam, Jesus is so clear here when it comes to that uh, with salvation, we have to ask him for salvation. That's right. We come to him for salvation yes and you know this is essential we cannot become saved by going to church no we cannot become saved by by going to the most wonderful pastor not at all you know and and asking them uh, we we come to jesus and we ask him yes and um, and that is so important there are people who have gone to church some of them their whole lives sunday after sunday yes they are good people but they have never actually asked Jesus, Jesus, save me now. Yes. I am like that woman. I am before you. I am broken. I am a mess. I ask you for this gift. That's right. Give me the gift of God. Yes. That is what every person needs to do. That, that is exactly what needs to be done, Timmy. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah. People, they just need to put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. and what He has already accomplished yes. for them at the cross of Calvary. Yes. And as they put their faith in Him and receive that yeah. gift of salvation by faith. You know, yeah. uh, I like what Jesus says to the disciples. Mm. You know, um, to Thomas, you remember yes. when Thomas said, show us the Father. Yes. You know, and Jesus says, you know, if you see me, you, see, see you have the seen Father. the Father. Thomas goes further. And when the disciples, you know, say to him that uh, the Lord had visited them, mm. you know, he said, you know, I will not believe until I see, see. him. And Jesus appears to him yeah. and he says, you know, um, Thomas, that's, this is me. Yes. You know, if, if you don't believe, you know, put your finger in my, yes. in my wounds, yes. you know, so you can feel yes. that this is me. I'm resurrected, yes. you know, and Jesus says to Thomas, he said, they are more blessed yeah. those who actually believed and have without seeing. Yes. 
And, and that and that is us. We are more blessed than Thomas. Yes. You know, we have not seen Jesus face yes. to face, but but we feel him so strongly on the inside. Yes. You know, we would rather deny the existence of this table That's right. than deny the existence of our God. Yeah. And and you know, faith, it is simple. Faith is a decision. Yes. We don't need to understand everything about Jesus before we accept him as our savior. That's we can right, come yeah. to him and we can say, Jesus, I don't understand everything about you, yes. but something within me is telling me that you are real yes. that you have got the power to save me so save me jesus save me now that's right you know it, it just takes a little bit of faith yeah. to produce the most extraordinary miracle and the most extraordinary miracle there is beyond blind eye seeing yes. and lame legs walking is somebody receiving jesus as savior and that transformation from the inside out. Yeah. That, that Actual, is the greatest miracle. To prove what you are saying. I mean, the disciples um, came to Jesus and said, Lord, increase our faith. Yes. And the Lord answered them by saying, if you, has, if you have faith as little as a mustard, a mustard seed, seed, you will say to this, you know, to this tree, be pulled you know, by your roots and be thrown into the, be and cast into be the done. sea. And the Bible says, if you say that without any doubt in your heart, yes. it will be done for you. Mm. So actually, when God created us, Temi, mm. all of us, whether you are born again mm. or you are not born again, we have a measure of faith in us. Amen. That faith, dear friend, is enough to get you saved. Amen. You have the faith you need to get you saved. You just need to call on the name of Jesus right now. That woman had an encounter with Jesus right now where you are. You can have an encounter with Jesus. All you need to do is say, Jesus, give me the gift of God. I am here to receive. Give it to me now. So dear friend, we trust that this conversation has blessed you. We feel incredibly blessed. Amen. It blesses me every time we, we chat. We are more excited. So excited. We're looking forward already to next time. So, dear friend, please connect with me on social media. We want to hear from you. We want to hear how this session has impacted your life. Until next time, may God richly bless you. Amen.